pimples. Right, let's get started. Yeah. Okay, so Sorry. it was the 2nd of February 1979, Newry County Down, and Christine Blakely was born to mom Mina and father Fred. Mm. Now, it was a it was a really happy home, wasn't it, Christine? Very, very happy home, yes. Mum and dad were just brilliant and yes, uh, 79, so yeah, my goodness me, back in Uri and yeah, it was a very, very happy life. I mean, we were spoilt in the best way and that there was just nothing but love at home, thankfully, mm. and we felt very blessed for the earth. That was my mum and uh, dad before it. And what did, and you, what did your mum and dad do? Well, mum was, um, was like a bookkeeper, mm -hmm. accountant person. She, she's very sensible. She's got the mathematical brain, was able to mm. work things out. My dad was a musician, oh. so very, very different. So dad was a drummer his whole life. Oh. So he was away a lot and away with bands, but we grew up, when I think back now, in a house full of music. Mm -hmm. And we love, it's still why I love live music and live performances now, and mm -hmm. that comes from dad, because I remember being taken to, to watch the band, and when you were kind of teenage years, you'd go up to the Empire Music Hall in Belfast and watch yeah. him, and you felt really proud to bring your friends along, because it was your dad up on stage. Yeah. And, and of so course you was, had your little sister. Yes, so. then I had my little sister, Nicola. So, um, I'm, you know, we're, we're thankfully the very best of friends. So we were always a very tight, happy, oh, yeah, lovely look. little unit. Exactly. What's yeah, the age so range between you and... Two, two and a half years, oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, two and a half years. So we, we, were, we had a lovely uh, childhood and we grew up in a beautiful part of the world mm. in spite of, you know, awful things that happened mm. in Northern Ireland over mm. the years. But it still was then, still is beautiful. Yeah, I still love going home. We were very lucky. We had a five minute drive to a beach. You were another 10 minutes from mountains. You know, you go up into Belfast city centre where you've got a city feel, but we had lots of greenery around us. Mm. And it just felt like the perfect way to grow up, mm. really, in spite of the backdrop well, yeah. of everything that was going on. Well, the thing on. is, you say that, you know, you're saying in regards to, unfortunately, the stuff that was happening at the time, which was at the times of the trouble. Mm. And do you remember certain things that you kind of witnessed or Yeah, or I mean, when you grow up in a setup like that, it does become you. You don't know any <clears> different. <throat> um, you become addicted to listening to the news every day because, you know, there's no social media, no mobile phones yeah. in those sort of early days. So everything, your life di was dictated to by what the news was that day. So whether you could drive into Belfast, mm -hmm. whether you couldn't, whether you could go to school that day, whether you couldn't. Um, you know, bombs going off really? 100%. There was one that, um, a bomb, I lived in a place called Newton Ards and um, a bomb went off right in the centre of the town. I would have been maybe nine or ten, maybe. Um, and we were all out playing, and it was like an earthquake. And we lived half a mile away from it. And it was what I assume an earthquake would have felt like. And suddenly we were just surrounded in smoke. And then all of a sudden the news comes through, and it's on the news, and the whole place was just obliterated. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it was so shocking, so soul-destroying, mm -hmm. but it was weirdly our norm yeah and people still had to get on with life and sadly you hear it all the time but it, it must have affected you and your mm. sister as young children in some way yeah i think because my dad was um like i say he was a musician and he was out in bands and traveling around a lot of the times and there was a, a time where there would be people going into pubs and clubs and just shooting around mm -hmm. them and i remember as a young child getting very very panicky and at what I suppose I could only describe as anxious, not that that was really right. talked about back yeah, then, as definitely. having anxiety. Mm. But I think I probably did, yeah, because I wouldn't sleep until I could hear Dad's car drive up on the oh. stones outside. Wouldn't you used to watch... Uh, oh, I literally just be staring, staring at the window. Oh, yeah. Mum would mom would sort of try to joke all the time, well, watch kettle never boil, she mm. used to say. And then I used to try and do the opposite of going, right, well, I can't look now, I'll not look at all. And it was mm. like, you'd, you'd play in your own mind just to make sure, and then the second you'd see the car come up, I go, ah, oh, sleep. Yeah. And that went on for, for years. So mm -hmm. when you're a little girl, all those little things definitely... Mm -hmm. And it builds you as a person, yeah. to be honest. You do, yeah. honestly, Brilliant. going into Belfast City Centre, loads of times, many big occasions at home, the Oma bombing being one of the biggest, I think. Um, and we were working that day. That was some years later when I was a bit older. 
and it just, it does, it knocks you for six because we're a small place mm. and everything felt like it was on your doorstep. It mm. wasn't physically, but it felt it. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of your doorstep, your, your family moved to Newtownwards. And... Newtown, Newtownards, as we New, say sorry, back New, then. New, no, it's spelt like that. I was just, I'm, do, I'm going all Northern Irish on yeah, you. Know? Northern <laughs> Northern <laughs> Irish. We yeah. love, love it. That, love that accent, <laughs> lovely. Um, but you were quite a headstrong child. I, I understand you ran away from school. Yeah, I did. So I was born in Uri <laughs> and had, was at school there and I loved my primary school there, Windsor Hill Primary. Primary, it was called. Oh. Yeah. And yeah. then I moved to this school and um, I decided straight away that I hated it. I missed all my friends that I'd had in my previous primary school. It's a big move when you what move children. What age are you here? About five? Five. So I decided, well, I'm not staying here. And I remember um, changing my shoes. I had to get my little school bag and I buttoned it up. I remember putting my coat on and I walked out. Wow. And we'd just moved to this town. So mum to this day cannot fathom how I found my way home. Wow. And I walked about a mile and a half <gasps> across wow. some busy roads oh and God. I knocked Ugh. on the door and I remember my mum's face draining of colour. She said, what are you doing here? And, and I just said, well, I'm not going back. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> I've escaped. I can clearly just hide in the house and they'll never find me. And of course, five minutes later, the poor teachers were like, please tell us that she's, she's here. Oh I put the fear of God into everyone, but the headstrong thing was definitely yeah, there that, from I a mean, very young that's age. That's what you need to work in TV. Yeah, so. I was stomping <laughs> home going, I'm not going back. <laughs> I did. So within that, with that strong, you know, will of yourself, you kind of knew, you always knew that you wanted to work in TV. There was a slight passion there when you there was younger. Was, I was always weirdly obsessed with TV and I have no understanding why. My parents were nothing to do with it. I didn't know anyone that worked in TV. Do, do you but think I it just... might have been the stuff that you saw? Well, I think because TV was so central to us growing up. You know, people talk about screen time now mm. and all the rest of it. We love TV. TV was on all the time. Yeah. Didn't do me any harm. Yeah, it was in my house. I loved it. And um, But also, going back to the news thing, you know, it was such a central part mm. of your home, really. Mm. And I, But it wasn't just being on telly. I used to drive past the BBC building and the ITV, or UTV as it's called in Belfast, and I'd drive past and go, I can't believe they're in there reading the news, but I watch it in my house. And I was yeah. really young when I had mm. that thought. I thought, how does that work? And weirdly, it was the technical side behind it all just fascinated me. And that was from a really young age. And I really don't know where it came from. It was just something sparked mm. in my mind. I thought, that's really interesting. I'd quite like to do that. I I read that you, oh, sorry. sorry, I read that you and your sister started to kind of make yeah. TV bits. Well, you see, this morning's been knocking around for how many years? <laughs> I originally thought of it when I was about <laughs> eight or nine years old. <laughs> it was my idea. <laughs> so I, uh, I think it might have been Santa, uh, brought me a little video camera. And my mum and dad still have a bank of VHS tapes and my dad back home with mm. everything I've ever done. Mm. But they also have this and it's um, videos of me. I'm, I'm not actually in it. I'm filming everything. So I'm the director and the camera operator and sound person and everything. And I've got my sister. She's like the equivalent of Kat and Ben. And then I had a newsreader and a weather wow. presenter. And I had this little TV show that I used to create when I was like seven. So you were kind of old. directing. I was, I'm, or... I'm not in any of it. I'm always uh, one behind the camera telling them what to do. And on special days, we'd have special guests. Madonna came to play. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, was, it, was, it was very, very star-studded. I love that it was a day of work experience that got your foot in the actual it was. Door. It was my lovely art teacher, stroke career teacher, Helen Shearer at Bloomfield Collegiate, the school I went to, and she knew I was obsessed with television. I'd written loads of letters and done lots of stuff, but she um, was able to get me one day of work experience at the BBC. Wow. So I was 17. It was on my 17th birthday. I was doing my A-levels, and I went after school to Kat Daly's husband, Patrick Kilty. It was his programme. Okay. And it was called PK Live, a big, it was a big network show, so you watched it here, but it came from Belfast, and that was my first day of work experience, wow. and I wanted to work with cameras, so that was my thing. But I was put in with the floor management team, and I, there and then, fell in love with it. I went, oh. I never want to leave this. This is really? the most exciting thing ever. And I can still, it was Blackstaff Studio in Belfast, and I still can smell the smell of the studio. Wow. There's a distinct mm -hmm. cleaned it smell. Since then, <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and it was just, it was just one of those things. I thought, I just got butterflies, and I still have that butterfly feeling every time I walk in here. Oh. It's never, oh, that's never nice. ever, ever left. That's nice. I really, really mean that. It's just that. 
I still can't believe how many of us, you know, get to 60, 70, 80, never ever having really done yeah, what we kind of wanted, wanted to, do. to do. I always felt really privileged that I kind of always knew what I wanted to do. Mm. It was just getting there. Yeah. But, but you worked hard to get there. Yeah, you did. You know? Yeah, well, but what was know. the moment then when it went from being behind the camera and had assistant floor manager, all of those things, to then being Doing in front? That. Well, I, I worked behind the camera for a long time. I worked... Um, with the floor management team. And then I was working with a comedy drama back home called Give My Head Peace. And I was the second assistant director on that. So I was sort of working up this, but it was very much behind the camera. Loved every single second of it. It made me appreciate what everyone does within mm. a TV environment. Um, I mean, there's lots of jobs I couldn't do. We've got Brooklyn in our ear today doing the counts. That's mm. a job I can't do. But I grew up having an appreciation what it took to make yeah. a TV mm. programme. Um, so I loved it. And then I got asked, there was a couple of other people that sort of tried to encourage me, but there was a guy called Mike Edgar at BBC Northern Ireland. And he was, I think, the head of entertainment at that time, head of programming. And he said, have you ever thought about presenting? Properly, like properly doing it as a job. And I, I remember laughing, going, oh, please. Um, anyway, to cut a really long story short, it took a while before I did, but I gave it a whirl with, with his backing. Right. And I, it was under one caveat. I said, if it goes horribly wrong, mm -hmm. I want to go back to my day job in the studio and no one mentions this again. Mm. And, well, um, I have to say, that's how it started. I think what we should do is have a look at you in 2004 because it definitely didn't go the wrong way. <laughs> look at this. Oh. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Sky High. This week I'm starting out over London Derry. Now, most people would drive into the city over the Foyle Bridge, but when you've got a helicopter, why not fly under it? Are you ready, Kate? Here we go. Absolutely. <gasps> cool. Oh my god. Cool. Wow. Like, so natural, not an easy one to start with, it that's was for sure. the best ever, oh. I loved And that was Keith that used to do Annika Rice's show back in the day. Oh, really? So I was starstruck already. <laughs> I was like, oh, I've got Keith in my helicopter. <laughs> well, yeah. listen, we're...